Hi, my name is Haley and I'm a senior at Princeton High School and I will be reading a story about Paul Robeson written from the perspective of a family member. Grandpa Stops a War, written by Susan Robeson and illustrated by Rod Brown, a Paul Robeson story. Daddy always said, it takes a man of peace to stop a war. And that's just what my grandpa Paul did. He stopped a war. When I was a little girl, I always asked my father to tell me the story. Grandpa Paul stopped a war, Daddy would say. But Daddy, how could he do that? He's not a general or a president. He's a singer. Daddy would tell me the story while our family was taking a car trip to our favorite lake. First, he would tell me how special Grandpa Paul was, and each time he added something new. Grandpa Paul was very tall and very handsome. His deep voice rumbled like thunder, but he never frightened people because he was so kind. Grandpa was a gentle giant, and children loved him because he always had time to play. Grandpa Paul was one of the greatest singers in the world. His favorite songs were African-American spirituals. Africans sang the spirituals after they were kidnapped and brought to America as slaves. They used secret codes in the songs to help people know when to escape. Grandpa Paul's father was a slave in North Carolina. When he was only 15 years old, he escaped to freedom because he knew the secret codes. Many years later, he taught the songs to Grandpa Paul. When Grandpa Paul sang these songs to people all over the world, they understood what Grandpa felt in his heart, even though they didn't speak the same language. Grandpa Paul was a movie star too, but the more rich and famous he became, the more he thought about other people. He wasn't happy just because he had lots of money. He wanted to help make life better for everyone, not just himself. While Grandpa Paul was living in London, war broke out in a nearby country called Spain. Generals in the Spanish army had taken over the government and started a war. Many children in Spain didn't have enough food to eat or clothes to keep them warm. Many families were homeless because bombs were destroying their villages and cities. Grandpa Paul decided to help, so he sang. Thousands of people came to his concerts in London. They brought money and food and clothes to send the children in Spain. Grandpa felt good when he, sent, when he sent everything to them. But the war in Spain continued and got worse. More and more children and their families were suffering. Grandpa Paul decided to go to Spain. He didn't know what he would do or how he would help. He just knew he had to do more. Grandpa Paul's friends and family got very upset. It's too dangerous, Nana told him. Stay in London where it's safe. You can do plenty from here. But I need to do more, Grandpa Paul said. Why risk your life, his friends asked. You're not Spanish. Because wherever there is a war, people suffer, Paul said. And each of us must do our part to bring peace into the world. You're only a singer. What can you do, they replied. I don't know, Grandpa Paul said, but I know I must go. If you're going, Nana said, I'm going too. So Grandpa and Nana went to Spain. The first night they were in Madrid, the city was bombed. The windows in their hotel shattered and the whole building shook. There were no lights and everyone huddled together while planes flew overhead dropping bombs. Then someone said, let's sing. As everyone sang, their fear melted away. That gave Grandpa Paul an idea. He asked his Spanish friends to take him to the front lines of the war, where a big battle was taking place. It's too dangerous, they all said at once. Grandpa Paul insisted. Grandpa Paul's Spanish friend, Captain Fernando, drove him to Teruel, where the fighting was fierce. They drove through the hills and valleys of the countryside past miles of olive trees and through groves of Valencia oranges that looked like little suns against the sad landscape. As Captain Fernando and Grandpa neared the front lines of Teruel, the gunfire was so loud they couldn't hear each other talk. They passed a big crater in the road where a bomb had fallen. 
Captain Fernando looked over to see if Grandpa Paul was afraid to go on. Keep driving, Grandpa Paul said. I want to sing my songs. Captain Fernando was surprised. In the middle of a war? Yes, Grandpa Paul said. I especially want to sing where men are fighting. Maybe my songs will give them hope for a peaceful world. It was a cold afternoon in 1938 when Grandpa Paul arrived in Teruel. The men fighting to save the Spanish Republic were discouraged. They were hungry, they were cold, and many were injured. When the men saw Grandpa Paul, their spirits lifted. They couldn't believe he had traveled so far and through so much danger to be with them. Please sing for us, they shouted with joy. They didn't care that the war was all around them. They just wanted to hear Grandpa Paul sing. The men gathered around Grandpa Paul. He asked them to turn the loudspeakers to face both sides of the battlefield so the soldiers on the other side could hear. And then he sang more beautifully and with more feeling than ever before. He sang for the children who were suffering. He sang for his father who had suffered until he escaped to freedom. He sang for all the people who had died in the war. The battlefield grew silent. No shots were fired. No bombs fell. There was just Grandpa Paul's rumbling voice singing African-American spirituals and songs of peace and love and freedom. While Grandpa Paul sang, there was peace. Thank you for listening.